guess. I don't even... Okay, I'm on my phone now because my iPad just crashed with YouTube. I just, I just don't even know what to do anymore. I know that my phone doesn't pick up audio as well, so, you know, let me know if you guys can hear me okay. Huh? Oh my god. Okay, am I back? Am I here? Okay. I don't know what Spectrum is doing to me. They're obviously trying to, <laughs> they're trying to break me. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, in all of the glory of reading this book, another one of my favorites was the section on Brazil nuts right over here when we were talking about cholesterol. Oh no, I skipped ahead. Oh no, I skipped ahead. Nope, I just remembered. I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> they are. I think it's a conspiracy. I think it's a conspiracy. Right now, gosh, do we only have like three people right now? That's all right. We'll keep going. Okay, so. Oh, no, is right. Okay. Oh, my goodness. I'm sorry, you guys. Internet in Hawaii. Hopefully this keeps going. So the other nutrient that can increase your cholesterol is trans fats. And trans fats definitely sneak into vegan diets on a very regular basis. So... You would get trans fats from like the processed foods that we were talking about. Um, now, trans fats can be specifically the partially hydrogenated trans fats. Um, partially hydrogenated oil is what it's usually called. That's trans fat. I'm getting all hot and bothered from all the internet problems. And trans fats are oils that have been solidified. They're used in processed foods a lot. Um, so if you see anything that says that it has, sorry, I know audio isn't great on the phone. Um, if you buy processed foods and you see that it says, um, partially hydrogenated oils or hydrogenated oils, those are trans fats, you should definitely avoid them. It's, it's great if you just avoid processed food altogether, but I know that we're not all perfect, right? It's fine to not be perfect. Um, but trans fats also sneak in from other places. Um, Animal products naturally contain trans fats. That's one of the biggest sources in the standard American diet of trans fatty acids. Um, the other source would be like oils that have been superheated. So a lot of food that's fried, um, you know, you wouldn't think, but that oil has been heated to such a temperature that it's just not, it's just, not good anymore. It's been denatured. And then, you know, what happens when you put potatoes into, into freaking oils to deep fry them, all the water leaves and it sucks up. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> so you end up getting a lot of trans fatty acids from like fried foods and other unhealthy foods. Thank you guys for like hanging in there with me through this. This is just turning into a little bit of a nightmare. Um, okay, so those would be the dietary sources where your um, the dietary sources of foods that can raise your cholesterol. Okay, you guys are still awesome. I was just over here stress eating some Brazil nuts. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's what I was trying to get to a second ago. <laughs> yeah, good question. Which one of us earned this? I'm going to kill Spectrum. I swear. Anyway, I went out and got some Brazil nuts because... You know, it needs to be researched more, obviously, an entire month after eating one Brazil nut. And they're super high in selenium, too, so it's not like you can really... Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we go, and we're back. They're just trying to drive me crazy. Yeah, and it's one of those things, like Dr. Greger said, you know, until it's been proven otherwise, it's such an inexpensive and safe 
thing to do, why not just try, why not try it? You know, why not recommend people? Yeah, maybe have one or two Brazil nuts. You know, I bought this whole jar. This was over $11 here in Hawaii. I don't know what are your guys' Brazil nut prices like. It's astronomical over here. But as long as I hide them from Levi so that he doesn't snack on them in the middle of the night, they'll last for a long time. Right? It's good stuff. Okay. So, that brings us to the last little bit. And it's a topic that I feel like has been um, visited several times throughout this book, which is follow the money and figure out why people are recommending what, what they are or why they aren't recommending other things, why doctors aren't actually recommending healthy diets to their patients. Um, it's because they don't, they don't have nutritional training and the little bit of nutritional training that they do have in medical schools is industry funded. You know, what doctors end up getting is a lot of education about prescription drugs, very dangerous prescription drugs. Yeah. <laughs> Lucy, you're absolutely right. No one recommends them. No one pays them to recommend a healthy diet. You know, I'm back. I'm back. Bless you, wonderful human beings. I am back. <laughs> okay. So that's, um, Okay, I'm gonna try sitting right next to our cable box and the router and everything. So maybe that'll maybe that'll work a little bit. Okay, so the endotoxins are a result of bacteria, and that bacteria is generally speaking on animal products, and the endotoxins survive um, cooked or otherwise, it doesn't matter. You eat them, they get into your digestive system. It appears that saturated fat ferries those endotoxins across the um, intestinal border and directly into your bloodstream. So it's really, it's really important that you not eat endotoxin rich foods in conjunction with saturated fat, which basically eliminates all, all animal foods from your diet, you know? So once the endotoxins are in your bloodstream, they really irritate the artery walls and they cause a lot of inflammation. And inflammation is really, um, what's the word for it, implicated in the development of heart disease. <laughs> Government conspiracies on the live stream, very possible. So heart disease and inflammation are really tightly linked. Now what can cause inflammation. We know that animal products are highly inflammatory, saturated fat, inflammatory, endotoxins, inflammatory, things like dietary AGEs, which I made a video about, which you can watch uh, if you haven't already. Dietary AGEs, which come from animal products and processed sugars and really high sugary foods. Um, you also get a lot of inflammation from free radicals and free radical damage. I recently made a video about that as well. I guess it's a couple months ago now. And so when paleo people and such talk about heart disease and inflammation and how, you know, we've had it wrong for so many years, they're partially correct because um, AGE stands for Advanced Glycation End Product. Um, I have a whole long, awesome, dense video about it, but they're, the paleo people are partially correct because inflammation and heart disease are very tied. But it's not the be all end all of the story. Heart disease is very much a holistic disease. And how are we doing on audio? Let me know if you're having trouble hearing me. I'll try to project more. Um. <laughs> Sorry. Um. And so heart disease being a holistic disease, it has many, many causes and it's just wise to be aware of all of those causes. Thank you guys for letting me know about the audio. It's wise to be aware of those causes and to take care of it as much as you can from as many different fronts. You know, that's why 
we talk about eating a whole plant food diet and that's why Dr. Greger talks about eating a whole plant food diet because just a vegan diet isn't necessarily going to save you from heart disease. As we've seen, you can be exposed to a lot of different fats and ingredients that raise your cholesterol. Um, you can be exposed to a lot of ingredients that cause some pretty severe inflammation. And, you know, it's just, it's just wise to take care of as many fronts as you can. And the easiest way to do that is to focus on whole plants, okay? Get rid of the animal products as much as possible. Get rid of the processed foods with the added sugar and the refined flours and the refined oils and the potential exposure to the trans fats and just focus on whole plants as much as you can, okay? All right, let me check in with your all's comments. Okay, so um, is there anything else that anyone would like to add about the first couple of few chapters of this book? and what you liked about it. <laughs> Cass says she's feeling guilty for eating french fries. Yeah, and you know, that's one of those things where if you, like, I eat french fries every now and then. It's, it's not something that I freak out about necessarily. If I do choose to do it, I just try to make sure that it's not necessarily a regular thing that I'm partaking in, you know? I also, excuse me, do you notice that after I have the <laughs> the french fries my skin, like I can just feel the grease coming out of my pores. Cool, I'm so glad that you guys are enjoying it. Yes, yes, 50 love, loves, loves it? Sorry, I know you in person, but I'm <laughs> having trouble pronouncing your username. She says to get an air fryer or one of those little, um, air ovens, convection countertop ovens like we have, and we make fries all the time with those. The trick is to pre-boil your potatoes so that they stay nice and moist, and you can get a little bit of crispiness on the outside without creating too many AGEs, right? And then you get really satisfying, really flavorful French fries as long as you flavor them with some good herbs and spices, right? <laughs> Sarah says, I always have to have something healthy in front of me if I watch Lily. <laughs> I'm glad that you're feeling inspired. Thank you. Oh, Alexis says she's eating her bowl of baked potato fries. Perfect. That sounds so good. I love this so much. Like, whole plant foods don't have to be restrictive. It doesn't have to be bland or boring. It just takes a little bit of finding your feet, a little bit of creativity, and then you just fall into a consistent pattern, and it works. All right, so just in case, we can do some Q&A for a while if that's what you guys would want to do, let me know. Um, but before we get into Q&A or anything, um, let's specify for next week. Um, how many chapters do you guys think would be good? I was thinking like two or three chapters, just to make sure that it's not too overwhelming for, for anyone. But you know, also it won't take us five years to get through this book. Yay, 5X Disney fans. She says she's getting an Instant Pot for Christmas and she has to wait for an air fryer. Hey man, that Instant Pot is amazing though. All right, we got some votes for three chapters. Some votes for two chapters. I have to say, I mean, the chapters aren't too long and complicated. The next couple chapters I know is going to be How Not to Die of Lung Diseases and Brain Diseases. So those are two pretty big chapters. I guess we can just, yeah, let's just cover next week two chapters, especially since it's, um, yeah, that's a good idea. We can group the cancer chapters together then. So let's do two chapters for this week. That'll be Lung Disease and Brain Disease. And then we can do that, and just in case my internet cuts out again, um, I love you guys, thank you for tuning in, and happy holidays if you are celebrating holidays this weekend. I hope it will be lovely for everyone. Okay. Um, so again, just to specify, we will be reading chapters two and three today. Two and three today. That will be the chapter on how not to die from lung disease and how not to die from brain diseases, okay? 
All right, so we can do a little bit of Q&A if you want to make it specifically about something that we read in the book or how to, oh, sorry, let me get in a good spot so I'm not getting blinded. If you want to make it about the book, if you want to make it about other stuff, feel free. We can go a little, ooh, free form. And I'll try to get the phone propped up in a sustainable way. <laughs> What book? I'm just tuning in. Um, we're reading How Not to Die by Dr. Michael Greger. And then all three of today's videos will be uploaded um, to the YouTube channel like regular videos. You can rewatch those if you would like. Um, will I be adding to the posture series? I'm not sure right now. Um, I know that it, it was helpful for some people, but it was very labor intensive and not super popular videos. So I'm trying to focus on some other videos which will help to generate a little bit more income and generate more subscribers for the channel because I need it to be sustainable first and foremost. <laughs> okay. Yeah, <laughs> live stream thumbnails, it's it's a real struggle. Zinc deficiency. Um, yeah, so zinc along with things like iron, selenium, magnesium, the general minerals that we need to get enough of. Um, it, there can be some genetic factors which just don't allow people to absorb or process zinc as as good as they should be able to. Um, gut health is also an issue. Um, and then some people recommend things like, you know, just eating high zinc foods, one of the highest being pumpkin seeds. Um, but they can, I, I don't think you're gonna get all of the zinc that you need just from eating pumpkin seeds. You'd have to eat quite a bit every day. It would end up being quite a calorically, um, what, what's the word I'm looking for? A calorically dense way to get your zinc. Um, I don't probably know enough off the top of my head, but I do know that if you are taking isolated nutrient supplements, some of those nutrients like in multivitamins, can impede the absorption of zinc. Um, I think that might be the case with some B vitamins and such. So try to avoid isolated supplements. If you can't get your levels back up through diet alone, you know, don't be afraid to supplement if you have a confirmed deficiency and that's what your doctor thinks that you should do, you know? Um, also, if you have specific issues that you're dealing with on a vegan diet, especially specific nutrient issues, I highly suggest the book Becoming Vegan. I've talked about it in several videos. It's definitely on the lists of much needed supplements. Um, 5X Disney fan says it struggles with vitamin D. You know, vitamin D, ideally we would get it from the sunshine. If everything is good genetically and if everything is good in our bodies and if we're not drinking alcohol and if we're not using drugs, or if we're not on prescription drugs, if everything is good with our body, we should be able to make our own vitamin D from the sun. That's how it is for the majority of the population. Some people have genetic issues, some people have some, some lifestyle issues that, that, you know, they just can't get their vitamin D levels up. The other thing to remember is that vitamin D supplementation has become a really big thing. It's become a really big industry. And so there were some industry pushed studies that indicated that we needed much higher levels of vitamin D than might necessarily be true. So your vitamin D levels don't have to be as high as some people recommend. Um, I think Dr. McDougall, it was either Dr. McDougall or Dr. Bernard said like around 20 was okay. Um, I've heard other studies say that 40 to 60 is better. I'm not positive what mine are at the moment. I assume it's pretty good since I live here, but um, I would say like somewhere around between 20 to 40 to 60. You know, it's like what's, uh, um, it's hard to know what's best. I trust sources like Dr. Greger. Um, certain studies I definitely listen to, but there can also be some confounding factors with these studies. Like these studies find that people that have, you know, above 40 to 60 uh, vitamin D tend to live longer. And so they say, okay, well, we should just take tons of vitamin D supplements instead of figuring 
you know, maybe it has to do with other lifestyle factors, right? Another thing that can cause chronically low vitamin D is obesity or, or being overweight because that body fat tends to absorb the vitamin D and keep you at a chronically low level. Um, if you do try sun exposure and your vitamin D levels don't budge, supplement. You know, it's not the end of the world. It's, it's not going to kill you. I wouldn't say um, that supplementing at really, really high mega doses is smart. It's wiser to take a smaller dose consistently, in my opinion, and in the opinion of other plant-based doctors. Obviously, I'm not a doctor, but um, you take not mega doses regularly, get retested. Once your levels are up, it's a fat-soluble vitamin. Your body is capable of storing lots of it, so you don't have to worry too much. Um, after your levels are up, then you can come off. Your levels will probably slowly go down. Um, Hopefully you could maintain it through sun exposure, but if not, you know, you'll have to supplement again. Just keep an eye on it and work with your doctor, that kind of thing. Um, Hannah says, are there any vegan foods that have vitamin D? I think some are fortified with, with vitamin D nowadays. Um, I've heard that if you expose your mushrooms to sunlight before you eat them, that they will make vitamin D and apparently your body can use it. The other source of vegan vitamin D is lichen, or lichen, if you're David Attenborough. And so if you want to go and eat some lichen off of a tree, I assume you would have to chew it a lot. But uh, I think you can get, I think you can get some vitamin D from lichen. I think that the, um, the vitamin, the vegan vitamin D supplements are made from lichen, okay? So you can try exposing your mushrooms to sunlight and see what, what happens next. Hannah Lucia Farrell, I do not doubt it. It's going to be the next superfood. And don't go out and, like, I know I just said it, but don't necessarily go out and eat lichen. I'm pretty sure it won't kill you, but I don't know for sure. Okay, so <laughs> that was a joke, mostly. <laughs> um... Vitamin K2, you mean? Isn't the K2? Um, I remember reading about the K vitamins not too long ago and becoming vegan, but I'm having trouble bringing back exactly what that information was. And I don't want to tell you guys bad information, but um, it is possible to get the K vitamins from a plant-based diet. Becoming vegan has the info. I'll see if I can look into that. Um, well... 5X Five, Five Disney fan says, I heard K2 helps after summer and taking supplements. I'm only at 40. 40 is still a decent level. You know, that's definitely not a deficiency. And I think 40 is a, a fair, fair good level to be at. Um, we are starting to see studies coming out that, that shows that people who were supplementing and get their vitamin D quite high can actually have issues with more mortality. Okay? So more isn't necessarily better in this case and I think you know a lot of naturopaths some of the more responsible naturopaths have come out and said you guys yeah so supplementing with vitamin D you know it's not a it's not something that that's terrible for you when you need it right uh, Lady of the Snowy Lake says, do you still work as a massage therapist? Yes. Um, I, I'm maintaining some of my clients with in-home visits. Um, so, you know, I'll do like two to three appointments a week right now, which is helping to stabilize my income, but, you know, isn't anything too significant. Um, probiotic supplementation. Okay. Um... So it's difficult to find a purely vegan probiotic that is effective and high dose. Um, I know that you live in Hilo here with me. So what I usually do is I go and get um, the critical care probiotics from either Abundant Life or Isla Naturals, our local health food store. And I think those have around 100 billion per, per dose. That's something that you can do after taking antibiotics. Um, 
but again, you try. Okay, cool. Backspace says, yes, I checked my Becoming Vegan book, Natto Fermented Soybeans is a Source of Vitamin K2. Um, <clears throat> there are some really expensive anim um, probiotics that you can buy on Amazon, but you know, those are definitely grown with dairy, definitely contain dairy, and I only recommend that if, or I mean, doctors only recommend doing that if you've had something go really wrong with your gut, okay? So just something from the health food store should be good enough for you. All right. <clears throat> okay, Lady of the Snow, I hope you sleep well. Thank you so much for tuning in and asking questions. I really appreciate it, and I... I so appreciate everyone's patience with showing up for so many live feeds that this has turned into. Cass says, how do you feel about plant-based vegan, veggie-based canned chili? You mean like the Hormel stuff? Levi buys that stuff sometimes. Um, it's definitely not an ideal food, you know, especially if it has the the soy protein isolates that they use to make the textured soy protein and such. And it's very high in salt, generally speaking. Um, so, and questionable things like, you know, natural flavors and stuff like that. And oil, generally speaking, added. So, <laughs> Scrap Saturdays, I like that. She says it's a yellow light food, which is using Dr. Greger's terminology, which I definitely agree with. Um, I would say it's one of those things to enjoy rarely, you know, try not to get addicted to it. It is hyper palatable. It's one of those hyper palatable foods that like gets you wanting more and more and more. And it's like, you know, I know that if I taste it, I immediately want more food that tastes like it, right? So I would say like try to wean yourself off of it if you can. There's some situations, you know, like college students and stuff where, you know, you're just in this in the situation that you're in and you got to make the best of it. But I'd say wean yourself off of it. Learn how to make your own chili. It's not all that, not all that difficult as long as you can um, learn how to use your herbs and spices. And with chili, it's basically like lots of cumin, lots of smoked paprika, some coriander seed, and that's going to be a damn good chili. All right? 5X Disney fans. Oh, and she was talking about Amy's brand. Amy's brand is definitely better than Hormel. Definitely better than Hormel. 5X Disney fan says, thoughts on drinking pure aloe juice for healing the gut. So the stuff that you get in the bottles, the pure aloe juice, I do kind of question like how medicinal it actually is. I know I've, I tried it, you know, I went through three or four bottles drinking it every day. I notice absolutely no difference. I know other people who totally swear by it. So maybe it's one of those like case by case things. Maybe some of it's placebo effects. I don't know. Um, I do question the medicinal properties of bottled aloe vera juice. Um, and, I mean, I've tried eating my own aloe plants, and it's, like, it tastes horribly bitter, and then you're at high risk of, like, overdosing yourself on a laxative, <laughs> on an all-natural laxative, so... I'm not really up for that either. I do smear it on my face, but you know. Up. Um, Kayla Lipsy says, I'm wondering about mushrooms. I've heard that they can cause yeast overgrowth. What do you think? Um, I think there are a lot of other things that are going to cause yeast overgrowth in a much bigger way than mushrooms, like processed foods, flours, sugars, that kind of thing. Um, yeast and candida overgrowth is one of those overly hyped up things as far as I'm concerned. It's generally speaking caused by processed foods or um, a diet that's too high in fat. I haven't seen good scientific evidence that says that mushrooms can cause a proliferation of yeast. You know, that sounds to me like it's more of a, more of perhaps a misunderstanding, but I, I haven't done a ton of research on that subject specifically. Okay. All right. Yeah, Sarah says in, in response to like the chili discussion, yellow and red light foods have helped me through my first year 
Oh, yellow light foods that helped me through my first year and red light foods, yeah. So, you know, using foods that are that are a little bit less than ideal, like it's, it's not gonna kill you and it can be really great for transitioning. Wholesome Harmony says, thoughts on alkaline water. Do you feel that there's a need? And if so, what do you do? Um, well, water, pure water is naturally slightly alkaline. It's close to the body's own pH. So I do feel, and I've heard this expressed by not only plant-based doctors, but then other people like, you know, Dr. Robert Morse, who I think is adorable and has some really great ideas, but I don't prescribe to 100%. You know, he says too that you don't want to throw yourself out of balance by taking, by taking in highly alkaline foods like that. Um, it can throw you out of balance just as much as acidic foods. So, um, I don't do it. I know that those Kangen water machines are like thousands upon thousands of dollars and that to me is a huge red light <laughs> and I don't see the points in paying thousands and thousands of dollars for something that's probably going to have like a fairly marginal effect on your health. You would be better served in my opinion by focusing on things like um, whole plant foods, right? That don't cost $6,000. All right, Mary Blossoms says, I hate to ask a woo-woo question. Hey, girl, never never feel bad about a woo-woo question <laughs> when we're talking about evidence-based nutrition, but do you have an opinion on medical medium? Yeah, so the medical medium guy, to the best of my knowledge, he advocates eating lots of plants, um, but I've listened to what he says. I've listened to his podcast a couple of episodes. Couldn't get through the whole thing, but... Um, he seems like one of those people who takes a little bit of scientific information and then really runs with it and then says a bunch of shit that doesn't really make sense. Um, I get that he's operating from like an intuitive place and I love that and I respect that. Um, but I think he also kind of operates within that realm of selling very desperate people ideas and hope that aren't necessarily going to work very well for them. I think he's also one of those people similar to, sorry, my dogs are freaking out, similar to a lot of naturopaths and like natural doctors who instead of focusing on the basics of like eat healthy foods, you know, like eat whole plant foods, instead of focusing on that, they take you off on a wild goose chase, so to speak where you have to do this and this and this, and then you have to, you know, pay for a private session with me, and then you have to take all these supplements, and then, oh, it's not, you know, it's it's not what your doctor thought it was, it's this, this diagnosis that nobody's ever heard of. And certainly there are some things like, you know, adrenal fatigue, where that wasn't accepted for a long time, and now it's kind of starting to get into mainstream medicine. I'm like, okay, yeah, well, maybe adrenal fatigue and hypothyroid exists more, but, you know you know. <laughs> the Precious Egg says, are you still dreaming of starting a commune? Because I was loving that idea. I'm not sure if I would call it a commune, more of, you know, community living where everyone has their own space. Um, I don't know where I'm going to get the millions of dollars necessary to start or build like an apartment complex for us. So, you know. What I would like to, to do hopefully sometime in the next year would be um, to have some not I don't want to call them retreats because the whole like oh come have a retreat on the big island it just feels so scudsy to me but um, I would like to have some get-togethers where people come and perhaps we all stay in one central location preferably next to the beach and then we hang out and talk about nutrition and cook together and eat good food together and, you know, learn from each other and provide each other with company and ease those feelings of loneliness that can be so prevalent on a vegan diet. All right. Yeah, as going back to medical medium, Mary says, um, I've appreciated him for promoting whole plant foods at least. The supplements were a huge red flag for me. Yeah, he does have great recipes. Like, 
you know, I don't feel like he's a bad guy. And if we compare him to like a doctor who just ignores everything that you say and just tells you to, you know, wh whatever, eat less and go on this statin, I would actually say he's probably better than a doctor. But, you know, again, you can go down the rabbit hole and end up spending a lot of money with those people. <laughs> My mom, oh, that's so cute. Amber says her mom wants her to go on a retreat so badly. That would be kind of, that would be fun. I'm glad that your mom wants to do something like that. Imagine my mom would take me to like a bacon cooking retreat. Um, Pure Vegan Heart says, did you and High Carb Hannah film many videos together? We didn't. And like part of me feels for a dick, feels, feels for a dick. What does that even mean? Part of me feels like a dick for not asking her to participate but I was feeling kind of sheepish because she's a bigger channel than me and I don't want her to feel like I'm trying to use her for her subscribers or her views like I really just wanted to meet her as a person and um and also I like I was vlogging that day and I could have told her but it's like when when you're meeting a new person especially when it's like I'm trying to control my my fangirlness and I'm trying to be really respectful of her boundaries because I know that it's just like it can be hard when you're in a position where you're a public figure and I only get this a little bit but it's like you literally just want to hang out with someone or you just want to go and have a damn good time or you just want to go to Starbucks and like not have to worry about people wanting things from you and you know like I don't I don't mind it if you see me in public say hi to me give me a hug I love it but I just didn't want to come at her like oh hey you want to be in my video and you want to film this video and like I just wanted her to be able to enjoy her vacation so we have we've talked since then and like since I made my vlog video and she's like you know next time we'll definitely film a video because apparently some of her fans are a little bit PO'd that we didn't make a video either so you know FNA says, how do I feel about iodized salt? I don't eat sea vegetables very often and sometimes use the salt to supplement. Well, I don't like the iodized salt. It just, I don't know, it just creeps me out. And maybe some of that is left over from like my raw food is hippie days where I'm like nothing impure. But, um, you know, Dr. Greger recommends to eat iodized salt and that's, um, I think of all of the things on this planet that you really need to worry about whether or not you consume iodized salt probably isn't one of them, okay? I think you'll probably be fine if you have iodized salt and that's where you get your iodine. I prefer to get my iodine from sea veggies because I do like their taste and I feel like that's sufficient for me. But you do what's, what's right for you, you know? Okay. Um, Scrap Saturday says she seems like, you know, High Carb Hannah we're talking about, like needs her space a little bit, and I think she's probably introverted like me, and there are times when she can, is happy to like turn that on a little bit more, and I definitely picked up on that too, like, you know, she didn't reach out for a video, and I didn't get the inclination that that's what the trip was about, so I wanted to be really respectful of that, and I didn't want to push myself on her or invade her privacy or invade a boundary like that yeah and so um you know I just wanted to be respectful because I appreciate it when people respect my boundaries too boundaries are a beautiful thing all right you guys so I'm thinking about wrapping it up a little bit how, how are you guys feeling about that I know I need to go drink some water when I talk so much, I dehydrate very quickly. Um, Cass says, should I be watching my salt? You mean like watching your total salt intake? Um, I think that's wise. You know, I think I eat around 1,500 milligrams of salt a day, and that feels really good for me. There was a while where I didn't eat any salt um, when I was on kind of like my raw food kick, and I had constant salt cravings 
trying to restrict my salt was definitely one of the reasons that I got into binging and overeating was because I wanted that salt and I just kept eating and eating and eating and never got it. I noticed that when I started eating some salt that my satiety managed itself a lot better. My adrenal me. I gotta yell at him about that. Like, don't call me when I'm live streaming, but it's not counting, so I'm not sure if I'm back. Oh Lord, what a night. Okay, there we are. Sorry, I don't know when you guys heard me, but Levi tried to call me, and I'm gonna yell at him when he gets home. So, anyway, salts. I like a bit of salts. My, uh, Dr. Gregor recommends very low salts. I like to eat a little bit more salt than he recommends because I feel better personally that way. Feel more satisfied, feel more balanced. All right, okay. Amber says she went to go get her hydro flask and a stink bug was in it. <laughs> so she had to empty it and wash it out. I feel you, girl. Bugs are crazy. What time is it here? It's like 4.38 right now, I think. So yeah, gosh, this has been a while. All right. Well, I'm going to take off. I got to call Levi, make sure everything's okay. I'll be nice to him. I didn't, I don't actually yell at him. That's just... Yell and talking is like the same thing to me. <laughs> All right. Oh. All right. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thank you for asking questions. Thank you guys for getting your book and participating. And I can't wait to be back and cover the next two chapters with you next week. Again, I hope you guys have wonderful holidays. Cass, I'm not sure if we're doing any more sexy tablespoons. It's hard to get Levi in the groove for that. Um, we are building an island in the kitchen soon though, and that'll make it much easier for filming in the kitchen. Not necessarily promising anything, but it'll be much easier. Okay, so thank you guys. I will hopefully see you all next week, and hopefully the internet will be more cooperative. Thank you for being so patient all the time. Happy holidays. There's our Christmas tree, if you can see it. All the stockings. <laughs> We're ready. The sexy tablespoons are off. All right. Do some with Annie if he doesn't want to. That's a good idea. Do you know Annie? How do you know Annie? I should get Annie over here. We could do that during the day while he's not even here. <laughs> okay. Bye, guys. Thank you.